So for number 42, um, we want to take the area bounded between these two curves, and I've drawn it here in yellow, that area, and um, <clears throat> we want to revolve it about the line y is equal to 1. So when we revolve it, we are going to get a um, the height of it and revolve it about this axis. So when we revolve it, um, it creates a cylinder. And we can think of this cylinder as being like an infinitely thin sheet of paper that got wrapped around the line um, y is equal to 1. And now the sheet of paper, it does have an area. Um, and it is... And it is an area as a function of y because the further that we move along the y-axis, um, the wider that our cylinder is going to become as we wrap it around the line y is equal to positive 1. I'm just going to erase that so it doesn't get too crowded. Um, and so we can think here of the volume as being the sum of all these, all these areas. Um, and so the first thing that we have to do is we have to find the boundaries of integration, um, and that is going to be this point here and that point, where these two curves intersect. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these curves equal to each other. Um, so we have y minus 3 squared is equal to 4. I'm going to expand the left-hand side, so y squared um, minus 6y plus 9 is equal to 4, and then bring everything over to the left side. So y squared minus 6y plus 5 is equal, to, uh, is equal to 0. And then all we have to do here now is factor it. And this factors into y minus 5 times uh, y minus 1 is equal to 0. So we can see here um, that the values for y are y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 5. Therefore, um, our volume is going to be, let me just zoom out, our volume is going to be the integral from y is equal to 1 all the way out to y is equal to 5 of a y dy. So we're summing up vertically all these cylinders. Um, and since it is a function of y, we have to be able to express this area here of the cylinder in terms of y. Um, let me just erase this. So this area of the cylinder, when we open it, it forms a rectangle, and the area of any rectangle, this is just uh, this is just base times height, right? So we need to find an expression for the height and an expression for the base. Um, so let's first look at, um, we are going to look at this guy right here, this guy right here. And we can see here that this height is equivalent to here. It's the short part, right? So that's the height. And how do we get an expression for it? Um, well, this distance, it is the distance of 4, because this whole section here, um, this whole section here is 4, minus wherever it touches the red curve, right? So if I go a distance of 4 minus that little chunk, I'm going to get the height that I want. Um, and let me just erase that so it doesn't get too crowded and show you guys from a different perspective. So once more, um, this section right here is basically just the height of 4 minus the little red chunk, right? So to get that height, we're going to go, this is 4 minus, the red chunk is wherever it touches the red curve, so minus y minus 3 squared. Um, so that's our height. Let me go ahead and, and remove this. Okay, that is our height. And now let's think about our base, right? So when we take this chunk and we revolve it, the longer part here is going to be defined by, let me put that in a different color, defined by this part, which is the base of my circumference, right? Um, the base of my cylinder, rather. So that would be our base. And um, since it's just a circumference, the, the circumference of any circle is just 2 pi r. Um, but we don't want it in terms of r, we want it in terms of y, since we're integrating with respect to y. So what we're going to do here is we're going to figure out a way to express this radius in terms of y. Um, and let's think about the height of this radius, right? Well, this radius, suppose that this, where it touches here, suppose that this is the, the point, um, let's see, y is equal to, let's maybe call this y is equal to 2, right? Well, my radius is going to go from 1, because it begins at y is equal to 1, all the way out, 
and then I should have done this in a different color. Um, yeah, I'll do that in orange. It's going to go from 1 all the way out to 2. So actually, this distance here is only going to be a distance of 1, right? Similarly, um, if my if I were up here and I had revolved a bigger um, a bigger cylinder, suppose that this point here is uh, y is equal to four. Well, my distance would go from my radius would go from one all the way out to four. So it would actually be a radius of three, right? Um, and so let me remove all of that. And so the pattern here that we're seeing is that the radius is just going to be the value of y minus 1. Because we don't begin at 0. We already begin at y is equal to 1. Therefore, we can say here that the radius is just wherever I'm at on my y-axis minus 1. So y minus 1. And therefore, um, my base is going to be 2 pi. And instead of r, I'm going to put y minus 1. Okay, so we do need to simplify things a little bit before we can um, we can move on. So let's think about this expression right here. 4 minus um, y minus 3 squared. So this is equal to 4 minus y squared minus 6y plus 9, which is equal to minus y squared um, plus 6y minus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to substitute that in. So that is going to be uh, minus y squared plus 6y minus 5. And um, so that's our height and we have our base, right? So our area is going to be equal to base times height, which is equal to 2 pi uh, y minus 1 times uh, minus y squared plus 6y minus 5. So this is the expression um, for our area. However, we don't want to put this inside our integral right here because this would be very hard to integrate it. So we have to turn it into a polynomial, which means that we have to, um, we have to expand it. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to bring the 2 pi outside. And then, so area is equal to 2 pi outside. And now I'm just going to um, expand this by first multiplying the y by everything and then multiplying by negative 1. So that's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to multiply by y. So I get here um, minus y cubed plus 6y squared minus 5y and then multiply everything by minus 1. So um, plus y squared minus 6y plus 5. So now I'm just going to simplify everything. So area is going to be 2 pi times, let's see, minus y cubed and then the y squared I have 6 plus 1. So plus 7y squared and then the y I have minus 5 minus 6. So minus 11y plus 5. Um, and now that I have this expression for my area, I can go ahead and uh, put this in my integral, right? And so my volume is going to be the integral from 1 to 5 of 2 pi goes outside because it's a constant, and now we're just integrating the area. So that's going to be the integral of minus y cubed plus 7y squared minus 11y plus 5, and all of this times dy. All right, so once we're here, um, we just have to take the antiderivative, right? So that's still 2 pi outside. Um, and then that gives us, let's see, minus y4 over 4 plus 7y cubed over 3 minus 11y squared over 2 plus 5y. And all of this evaluated um, from 1 to 5. So let's evaluate it, which is equal to 2 pi. I'm going to put 5 whenever I see y. So uh, minus 5 to the power of 4 divided by 4, that gives us minus 6 to 5 over 4, and then plus 8, 7, 5 over 3, um, and then minus 2, 7, 5 over 2, plus 25. And now we're going to subtract um, by evaluating for 1, right? So then that gives us minus, um, minus, minus, so plus 1 fourth, and then minus 7 third, minus, minus, so plus 11 over 2, and then minus 5. So once we have this, all we have to do is plug this in our calculator. Um, that's going to give us 2 pi times 64 over 3, which is equal to 128 pi over 3. And um, yeah, that is our volume that we get when we take 
um, the area bounded between these two curves and we revolve it about the line y is equal to 1. So let me just scroll back down and that is it.